Getting back to Chuck Missler, one of the things I discovered when I was reading his book is that he developed a thesis about these space aliens. He claimed that they were beings that could come in from a parallel universe. And he developed a theory called hyperdimensionality uh, based on um, modern physics, postmodern physics, I should say, and that these beings could pass back and forth into Earth at will. And he even suggested that possibly this would explain Jesus Christ and his resurrection, hyperdimensionality. So as I was researching further, I discovered that he was quoting from some physicists. And he, of course, described them as very credible physics professors and that kind of thing. But Niels Bohr, David Bohm, and Carl Pribram. And uh, as I was researching that, I discovered that Missler had borrowed very heavily from a writer named Michael Talbot, who's no longer with us. He passed away shortly after he wrote a book called The Holographic Universe, in which he was attempting to develop a New Age version of physics that would describe the universe. And uh, that actually leads into a, a quote that you have, that this became a paradigm to view scripture, to view reality, to view truth, this New Age physics. Well, I actually, through many of the articles I've written on Chuck Missler, uh, I had taken many quotes from his book, Cosmic Codes. And every time I quoted Chuck Missler, I found out later after reading Michael Talbot's book that all of these ideas and even quotes directly out of Talbot's book were actually from Talbot and not from Chuck Missler. But here's an example of what Chuck Missler actually teaches in Cosmic Codes. He, uh, and this is a quote. We are stumbling within this interval between the miracle of our origin and the mystery of our destiny. We are now beginning to realize that most critical aspects that impact our destiny lie just outside the ostensible boundaries of the veil surrounding only a virtual reality. This field of study is called quantum physics and its philosophical implications can be shattering to our presuppositions about our reality we now discover that the physical reality that surrounds us is only a virtual simulated reality made up of indivisible electrically charged particles and in fact we exist within a digital electrical simulation. In other words, it's an illusion. All reality is an illusion. Now isn't that the essence of postmodernism? Exactly. Which is another reason why we call this postmodern prophecy paradigm. Well, in the name of Michael Talbot's book is The Holographic Universe, and that's what this depicts. A holographic universe. It is um, multidimensional, parallel universes. All of these particles and things, all the quantum level is all connected as one. Um, M Missler talks about the non-locale principle that he... There is no location. Yes. Everything that exists is all one monistic being. And well, that, go ahead. This then raises the question, which we'll have you address, Pastor Larry, is we as Christians believe in absolute truth, that God's word is absolute truth, that Jesus came and delivered absolute truth, that we can know the truth because of what Jesus came and did and said. This changes everything. If we have a Christian leader teaching this worldview, this paradigm, which is new age, comes from the occult world, what happens to our Christian faith? Well, one must understand a little bit of quantum physics, and one can only understand quantum physics by comparing it with the old physics. The old physics, uh, Sir Isaac Newton, viewed the universe as a clock that had intricate parts that were created by God that worked together, and uh, our solar system being an example, some of the pictures of atoms being an example, and so forth. Back, I would say roughly in the 1960s, when all of the social revolution was taking place in the United States of America, something began to emerge called quantum physics. Because the old physics viewed the universe as very ordered, and of course, that is what is observed when you read the book of Genesis. It's an ordered thing. God saw it was good. You know, day one, day two, day three, right on through. Everything is ordered. 
So that was the way the universe was viewed. Enter quantum physics. Instead of looking at reality at the macro level, that is, you know, what's out there that we can observe at the level of interplanetary relationships and so forth, and the order, physicists began to look at reality in terms of the, the micro-reality. And what they began to see was that things were not quite as predictable as what the old physics taught, that there was randomness and chance. Hence, the new view of physics became not that the universe is a clock, but rather that it's a game. And so we just don't know how the game is going to work out. Now, there are some people in what we would call New Age spirituality thinks that you can develop your consciousness to the point where you can actually control the gaming of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is that it views the universe as one. And of course, it includes God in that paradigm. God's there. He's inside, not outside. This has a tremendous effect upon the Christian faith. Yeah. And I have something I would like to read to you, and it's just brief and it's very general, but it kind of sets the trends as to where, you know, process theology came from, open theism, and so forth. The idea of merging reality into one. Oneness is what it's called. And of course, we realize there's a duality because there's heaven, Above, there's earth below. That is a duality that Jesus recognized in John chapter 8 when he told the Pharisees, I'm from above, you're from below, where I'm going, you can't come. But let's say, for example, you take and you make reality different from the way that Jesus described it, and you make it one. I quote, Any attempt to merge science with oneness, spirituality, destroys the biblical worldview. If all is one, then God is no longer outside, but inside the system. And that's what they call it. They call it a system because the parts are all integrated and working together. As the eminent one, this God, he, she, or it, it could be anything, evolves and mutates too, i.e. process theology. Further, because God is wholly imminent in the universe, he is no longer sovereign over the universe. He no longer controls it. Amazingly, the new spirituality suggests that if humans attain onto their higher consciousness, they, with God, can continue to co-create and co-control the universe. Further, Christ's incarnation becomes unexceptional. He is not the only begotten Son of God. Jesus is viewed as an ascended, not descended, master, who in his higher consciousness learned how to manipulate the system, his miracles. Something we can do too if we experience a conscious shift in what we know, in which shift we will learn that we are a Christ too, human potential. As part of an evolving universe, morals change, moral relativism, evil becomes undefined, and then alluding to John Lennon's song, we can imagine there's no heaven, no hell that there's no separation, just oneness. And this is but a snapshot of how adapting Christianity, adapting our thinking to this way of science, seduces and takes captive the Christian faith. And it's just that serious. Mm 